Am I like mostly in the middle? Two. Let me see. Okay. You can go to your this way. Go that way. All right. Is that better? Our phones are different. Right. So my lenses are different than your lenses. I'm just gonna slide it Welcome yogi friends. I'm coach Melanie here at Results Fitness. Thank you for joining um, me here at our digital studio Results at Home for this yoga session. Where we'll be focusing on headstand. Um, but don't worry, you don't have to do headstand if you're not comfortable with it. I have options and modifications. So you'll just go as far as you're, you feel comfortable with and stop wherever you want. So I'll take you through a very step-by-step -step, um, process to get into a headstand. So you will need your yoga mat today. And as always, if you have a yoga block, just have it handy um, in case you need it, just to bring the floor up a little bit closer. All right, let's get started in a child's pose. So go ahead and bring your big toes to touch. Separate your knees nice and wide. Sink your bottom down and back towards your heels and then reach your fingertips forward. Allow your forehead to rest on the earth. Allow your arms to soften, your shoulders to soften. Your mouth gets nice and soft. And beginning by bringing awareness to your breathing. Listening and feeling for the natural rhythm of your breath. Allowing it to draw you into your body. With each exhale, you just soften into the earth a little bit more. Feel a little heavier, a little tension seeping out. From this place of quiet and still, setting your intention for your practice today, your reason for showing up on your mat, repeating your intention to yourself three times, always knowing that what we believe is what we create. Taking a nice deep full breath in through your nose. Open your mouth and let it go. Do that again. Nice, deep, full breath in. Open, let it go. One more time. Breathe it all in. And let it all out. With your next inhale, making your way up to a tabletop, so all fours. Opening your fingers wide, stacking your shoulders over your wrists, your knees right underneath your hips. And from here you can just sway your hips a little side to side. You can circle out your shoulders, just noticing where your body is in this moment, how it feels. 
bringing awareness to any areas of tightness or any areas of openness. Maybe shake your head a little bit, yes and no. And then coming back to that neutral spine, shoulders over wrists, knees under hips. With your next inhale, arch your sit bones high, drop your belly down and pull your shoulders onto your back for your cow pose. And your exhale, round your back, tuck your chin, pull up and in for cat. Inhale and come back to cow, use the whole length of your breath. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cow. Two more. Inhale takes you to cow. Exhale takes you to cat. Really pull your shoulder blades apart. Inhale, cow. Last one. Exhale, cat. Inhale to a neutral spine. Exhale your air here. Curl your toes under. Take a nice deep breath in. And then on your exhale, push your hips up and back for your downward facing dog. Fingers remain nice and wide. Hands are shoulder width apart. They can be wider. If you have tightness in the upper back, just separate your hands a little further apart. Making sure your whole palm is connecting to the earth. Keeping a little bend in your elbow so you can squeeze your shoulder blades onto your back. Looking back at your feet, it's about hip distance apart, maybe a little bit less. And you're softening your upper chest back towards your upper thighs. Pushing the weight up and out of your shoulders, down and back towards your heels as you lift your sit bones high. So finding length in the spine, length in the side body. You may need to bend your knees substantially here, especially if you have tighter hips, uh, uh, hamstrings, or low back. You may have to bend your knees more. And then you can go ahead and move around in your dog in a way that feels good. So if you want to walk it out a bit, bending a knee deeply, pushing the opposite heel down and back. If you want to come to the tips of your toes and then push down and back through your heels. If you want to roll to a high plank and back to a down dog. Any movements that feel good and help you to find your way into your body and into your breath. Go ahead and do them now. Taking a little inventory again of where your body is in this moment, how it feels. Eventually settling into stillness and allowing your breath to be the only thing moving your body. Nice deep breaths in and out through the nose. Lengthening your inhale to match the length of your exhale. Take another deep breath in. On your exhale, start to walk your hands back towards your feet for a rag doll, a standing forward fold at the back of your mat. So again, the feet are hip distance apart, two fists between the big toes, and you'll grab opposite hand to opposite elbow and hang heavy in this forward fold. Your toes are a little in, your heels are a little out, so that the sides of your feet are parallel to the sides of your mat. Grounding down through your heels, and then rocking the weight forward towards your toes. So you're evenly distributing the weight in your feet, front to back, side to side. Lower half of your body is nice and strong and grounded. Upper half of your body is nice and soft and opening. So using gravity here to help assist you in lengthening your spine. Dropping the head, maybe gently shaking it, maybe swaying a little side to side. Sending your breath into your back body to create the space there. Taking nice deep breaths in and a long breath out. Breathing in, breathing out. One more big breath in. On your exhale, release your fingertips to the earth. Walk yourself back out to that downward facing dog. Take a nice deep breath in and a long breath out. Inhale and come to the tips of your toes. Exhale and bend your knees, look forward. Walk your feet to the top of your mat. On your inhale, find a halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Grounding down through your two feet, inhale, rise all the way to the top, sweeping your arms out to the side, up and over your head. 
Grab your left wrist with your right hand. Take a nice deep breath in as you soften your shoulders away from ear, your ears. And on your exhale, side bend over to the right. So ground through your right foot. Pull your left shoulder blade onto your back. Inhale. Come back through center. Soften your shoulders away from your ears. Grab your right wrist with your left hand. And on your exhale, side bend over to the left. Pushing through your right foot. Rotating your right shoulder onto your back. Inhale and come back through center. Stretch up, maybe slightly back. Exhale and fold over your legs. Inhale and find a halfway lift, nice long spine. Exhale to your high plank, the very top of your push-up. Plant your hands and step your feet back. Fingers remain wide, shoulders over wrists. Gaze is down, right in between your hands, pushing your heels back, hugging everything in towards the midline. Taking nice deep breaths in and long breaths out. Breathe in. On your exhale, push your hips up and back, downward facing dog. We're just opening up through the shoulders. Inhale and roll forward back to your high plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. We're gonna do three more here. Take your time, move with your breath. Inhale, takes you to high plank, top of that push up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forward, high plank. Go ahead and take it nice and slow. Nice and slow and controlled movement. Exhale, downward facing dog. Last one. Inhale, roll forward. Exhale, downward facing dog. This time, roll forward to your high plank. Drop your knees and lower all the way down. Your whole plank will hit the deck. From here, extend each leg long behind you. Toenail side is down. So you're pushing through the tops of your feet so your kneecaps come up and your legs are engaged. Slide your hands back right near your chest. Bring your forehead center to the ground. And with your inhale, lift up for cobra. Squeeze your shoulder blades and your elbows in. Keep your gaze down so your neck stays long. Exhale and lower down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. Warming up that upper back and shoulder area. Exhale, come down, we have two more. Inhale and lift up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale and lower down. This time, come to your up dog if you're ready for it. If not, cobra. Inhale and lift to a cobra or an upward facing dog. An up dog, just your hands at the very tops of your feet. Touch the earth as you isometrically pull your hips forward in between your hands. Exhale over your toes, find downward facing dog. Take a nice deep breath in and a long breath out. Breathing in, breathing out. From here, drop down onto your forearms and roll forward to a high plank on your forearms so your elbows are right underneath your shoulders. Hugging everything in towards the middle again, taking a nice deep breath in and a long breath out. Breathe in. On your exhale, keep your arms the same. Push your hips up and back like a downward facing dog. You may have to walk your feet in a little closer towards your face for a dolphin pose. This is a pretty deep stretch in the upper back and shoulders. Now inhale, roll forward again, back to that dolphin plank. Exhale, push your hips up and back. Dolphin pose. Again, we're getting a little deeper into the shoulders. Inhale, roll forward. Exhale and bring it back. Two more here. Inhale, pull it forward. Exhale, bring it back. Last one. Inhale, pull it forward. Exhale and bring it back. And either stay here holding in this dolphin pose or drop your knees down for what we call puppy dog pose. Very similar to a child's pose, except your hips stay up here. But you're still getting that nice deep stretch in the upper back and shoulders. Take a nice deep breath in and a long breath out. Breathing in and breathing out. One more big breath in, long breath out. Make your way back to your downward facing dog. Take a nice deep breath in and a deep breath out. 
dropping down to your knees. I'm going to explain headstand to you. I'm going to explain it in, in steps. So again, you can stop wherever you feel comfortable stopping. So if you are newer to headstand or if you just have a little fear of being on your head, I would suggest moving your mat near a wall. If you have a wall space in your home that you can use, bring your mat closer to that. If you don't, what I like to do sometimes at home is against my refrigerator. That, you know, is a flat space and it's not going to move. So you can always move your mat close to your refrigerator if that's possible. All right, so I'm going to take you through two different types of headstand, tripod headstand and traditional headstand. There's many different variations of headstand, but those are usually the first two for beginners. So I'll take you through both and you'll feel more comfortable going into one or the other, depending on your body and how you feel. So we'll start off with tripod headstand. It's called a tripod because you're making a triangle with your hands and your head. It's making a triangle base. So your hands would be the base of the triangle, shoulder width apart, and you would bring your head to be the tip of the triangle right at the top. So you want to be on the crown of your head for a headstand. So in order to do that, you bring your thumb to the middle of your forehead and bring your middle finger back. That is how far back on your head you want to be for a headstand. I know it seems far back, but that's where you want to be. I always see people too far forward here on the front of their head. You want to be nice and far back there. So you place your hands on the ground, shoulder width apart. You bring your crown of your head down to the ground, making the tip of that triangle. From here, you want to hug your elbows in tight towards your sides. Downward facing dog your legs. So again, if you want to just stay right here, this is enough for you. Just getting used to being on your head. Or you can start to tiptoe your toes in towards your face. Again, you can stay here. Or you can bring one knee onto an elbow. Maybe both knees. This is a great place to stop. If you're new and you're feeling a little fearful, you can stay right here. Or you can start to hug your knees into your chest and then extend your legs all the way up towards the ceiling. Coming into the full headstand. When you're ready to come down, you'll engage your core and slowly lower your legs all the way back down. So that is a tripod headstand. So if that one sounded good to you, you can go ahead and go into your tripod. Next, I'll explain traditional headstand. So similar, except this time you'll have your forearms down on the ground. I'll show this one against the wall after I show you the setup. So you want to have your hands together, almost like you're holding a tennis ball in your hands. You'll bring your hands down to the ground, and then you'll bring the crown of your head so that the back of your head rests right on the back of your wrists. So this is the setup for a traditional headstand. I'm going to take my setup and go to the wall for those of you doing this at the wall. You'll bring your hands down, bring the crown of your head down. From here, you'll downward facing dog your legs and then start to tiptoe your toes in towards your face. Again, you can stay here or you can bring one knee up, maybe both knees, and extend both legs up towards the ceiling. The wall is there, like I needed, for some support. So maybe one heel is against the wall as you bring one leg forward. Taking some nice deep breaths in, and long breaths out. Breathing in, and breathing out. When you're done, You'll engage your core, use your core to slowly lower your legs all the way back down. Good job back at home. Hopefully you made it up into one variation or the other of your headstand. When you're done, uh, let's meet in child's pose. Child's pose here. Take your legs nice and wide. Sink your bottom down and back towards your heels. Reach your arms forward. Giving your nervous system some time to settle down. Being up on your head can be a little scary. Taking a moment to honor yourself for trying something new, if this is something new for you today, or trying something that maybe is a little scary. Take a nice deep breath in and 
inhale, love, breath out. Make your way to a downward facing dog. Pushing your hips up and back, breathing in and breathing out. Drop down onto your forearms and lower your whole body down to the ground for what we call sphinx pose. So go ahead and extend each leg long behind you. Toenail side is down. Feet are about hip distance apart. Hands are parallel, forearms parallel. And from here, isometrically pull your hips forward in between your elbows, squeezing your shoulder blades together and down your back. Getting that nice stretch for our back. After all that headstand stuff, Taking nice deep breaths in and long breaths out. Breathing in and breathing out. One more big breath in. On your exhale, slowly lower all the way down. Bend your knees behind you and just very gently windshield wiper your knees back and forth. Release through your low back, through your hips. Make your way back to your downward facing dog, curling your toes under, pushing your hips up and back. Take a nice deep breath in and a long breath out. Breathing in and breathing out. With your next inhale, lift your right leg high with an internal rotation. So the right hip and the right toes point down. Inhale as you lift your right leg up a little bit higher. And then on your exhale, step your right foot to the outside of your right hand, dropping your back knee. We're setting up lizard pose here. So you'll walk your right foot over to the right side of your mat, pick up your toes, and point them to about one or two o'clock. You can stay right here. If this is enough for your hips, stay here. Or you can soften your right knee out to the right, coming out of the knife edge of your right foot. And again, you can stay here, or you can start to come down onto your forearms, or this is where that block comes in handy, you can bring your forearms to a block. So finding what feels best for you and getting that stretch in the outer, upper right hip area. Sending your breath into that space, unclenching your jaw, softening your mouth and your shoulders, noticing where you're picking up some tension as we get a little deeper into the hips, just seeing where you can soften. You can even use your right hand to gently push your right knee out to the right a little bit if it feels nice to you. Breathing in and breathing out. Deep breath in, long breath out. One more, breathe in, breathe out, inhale and slowly start to come back up. Bring your right foot back in, curl your back toes under, step your right foot back to meet the left, push your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Go ahead and walk it out, stretch it out a little bit here. Feel the right side of your body again. And then as you're ready, with your next inhale, extend your left leg all the way up. Internal rotation, left hip and left toes point down. Flex and fan the toes of your left foot like you're standing on a wall behind you. Inhale as you lift it up a little bit higher. On your exhale, step your left foot to the outside of your left hand. Drop your back knee. Walk your left foot over towards the left edge of your mat. And then pick up your toes and point them to about 10 or 11 o'clock now. Again, depending on how tight this hip is, you can drop it out to the left if it feels good. You can come down onto your forearms. You can come to that block on whatever setting. Pulling your heart and chest forward as you soften your left knee out towards the left. You can even use your left hand, like I said, if you want, to add a little more pressure to the left knee. Nice and soft, not pushing or forcing using your breath to soften the space and then maybe going in a little deeper.
You'll notice that one side is tighter than the other. Mine's my left side for sure. So being a little more gentle and loving to the side that causes you a little more stress. Taking nice deep breaths in and long breaths out. Breathing in and breathing out. One more big breath in. On your exhale, gently bring your left foot back onto the ground. Walk it back more towards the middle of your mat. Curl your back toes under, lift up your back knee. Step your left foot back to meet the right. Push your hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Again, go ahead and walk it out. Stretch it out. As you're ready, drop your knees down to the ground one at a time in between your hands. Cross over your ankles and roll onto your back. Knees point up towards the ceiling, feet hip distance apart. We're going to set up a bridge pose here. With your inhale, lift your hips up off the ground, interlace your fingers at your low back, and walk your shoulder blades together underneath you, using your strong legs to lift your hips up towards the ceiling, rotating your inner thighs down and in towards each other, breathing into the front body, taking nice deep breaths in, and long breaths out. Breathing in. Breathing up. One more big breath in. You lift up a little bit higher. Exhale and release. Separate your feet, mat distance apart, and go ahead and windshield wiper your knees again, back and forth. Releasing the low back and the hips. And now bring the soles of your feet together and allow your knees to open wide. Place one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly for Supta Baddha Konasana. Close your eyes. Take a moment here for yourself to honor the person on your yoga mat, the most important person in your life. towards the ceiling. Try to keep your sacrum, your low back, on the earth as you gently hug your knees down in towards your armpits. You can sway a little side to side if it feels nice. You can stay static. and thighs. And then hugging your knees into your chest. Open your arms to a T, palms face up. Take a nice deep breath in. On your exhale, drop your knees over to the right and your gaze over to the left. If that's okay with your neck, if not, just keep your gaze up towards the ceiling. Allowing gravity to assist you again in this nice supine twist. Inhale and slowly come back through center. Exhale, drop your hips over to the left and your gaze to the right. If your neck is okay with that.
Inhale and slowly come back through center. Hug both of your knees into your chest. There, give yourself a nice big, big squeeze. And by Shavasana, go ahead and separate your feet more than mat distance apart. Open your arms wide, palms face up. Integrate your shoulder blades together underneath you so that your heart and your chest stay wide open. Take a nice deep full breath in through your nose. Open your mouth and let it go. Allowing your whole body to soften down. Letting go of any remaining tension that you're still holding on to. Letting your breath return to its natural state. Giving yourself the gift of these few moments of stillness before going on with your day. Change your perspective. Sometimes, a slight difference in where we stand can dramatically change how we see things. One morning, shortly after sunrise, I climbed to the top of a mesa in Sedona. I'd been there the day before, staring at the shapes and forms of the other mesas and gazing down upon, upon the city. Now this morning, I sat in a different place to meditate and to look around. The spot where I sat this day was only a few feet from where I would sat before, but the view looked entirely different. I saw different shapes and forms in the mesas. I saw a different view of the city, the world below. We often need to change our position so we can see things differently. We don't have to make a dramatic change. We just need to move around a little. Perhaps an unresolved issue is blocking our vision blocking us from seeing the beauty that's there. Maybe a bit of anger or self-contempt is interfering with our vision. Maybe the changes we need to make are minor, much less than we thought. Maybe we simply need to look at whatever we are viewing without fear to change our mood and see it with the eyes of love. Take a break, move around, learn to change your perspective. Maybe you don't need to change what you're looking at. You just need to change where you stand. And very slowly begin to deepen your breath. Gently allowing some movement back into your fingers, back into your toes. Maybe stretching your arms up overhead, taking a nice full body stretch if that feels good. As you're ready, you'll hug your knees into your chest and roll off to whichever side seems to call to you in this moment. Using your hands, gently pushing yourself up to a seated position at the top of your mat with your eyes remaining closed and your hands falling to Anjali Mudra our mudra of gratitude. Taking a moment here to honor yourself. Honor everyone coming here and joining me for your practice. I'm grateful to each and every one of you. Remembering your intention and sending it into the universe. Bringing your thumb knuckles to your third eye center. The light in me honors and recognizes the light in you. Together we say, Namaste. Thanks again, everyone, for joining me here. Hopefully you made it into a headstand. If not, you're on your way there. 
Hope to see you again soon. Thank you all.